this morning you joined me on public holiday Wednesday it's workers day uh, we moved and I'm out and learning the roads in a new suburb uh, you know I live across the other side of Durban as of today actually officially and I'm getting to know some new well not really new roads uh, I just didn't run here as frequently I uh, would only get over the side of town on longer runs um, but I'm learning where the better street lit roads are and all that kind of thing live at the top of a very big hill and getting home is quite a mountain climb now um, and you can certainly do lots of hill work in this area I'm now in Glenwood not too far from our new home <coughs> and today well gonna take advantage of the public holiday and get out and do a little bit of a longer run got a little bit more than five weeks to go before comrades day and so I thought we'd have a look at the comrades route and specifically the up run I know my other comrades route videos are more about the down run it's been a few years since we've run up to Maritzburg uh, I think the last one was in 2019 I didn't run in 2019 I was on the side of the road supporting my wife uh, last one that I ran up was 2017 so we're gonna have a look at that and take you through some of the important points especially for those who are, the, are new to comrades and there will be a lot of people who are new to the up run with it being the first one since 2019 so let's take a look at that right so let's get into looking at the comrades up run route um yeah first time since uh, 2019 that the up run has been finishing in maritzburg uh so it's going to be new for a lot of people so i thought i'd uh, do a summary of it uh the first thing to mention is that the start is really much wider than in Peter Marisburg. It's also really easy to access and you can be dropped off pretty close by. Um, it's also going to be a lot warmer than what it is in Peter Marisburg. Um, I'm talking to you on the 5th of May, the day after the route tester. Um, I have not had a need to wear anything warmer than just a normal running t-shirt and it's currently five weeks to go before comrades. The weather will get a little chillier um, but not really very much and you might even just get away with wearing your running vest to the start uh, depending on the weather um, then what I'm going to do through the video you'll see I will use uh, my route profile from the this is from 2017 comrades finishing at the race course uh, but slightly different route in uh, at the end um, but the major hills are all here uh, you can see I've marked the top of Long Polly's there, which you've got a very long way to get there. Um, but I'm going to use this, and I'm also going to use sort of clipped parts of the route, which are from Comrades in Three Days, and just they just help you to see a little bit better in detail. But I'll explain that as I go. Um, so let's get into it. So as you can see from the route profile, the first 40 kilometers is very important and it's very important how you approach the first 40 kilometers. You are going to do all the hard work and most of your climbing in the first 40 kilometers. By that stage, you are going to be higher than you will be at the finish in Peter Maritzburg and how you approach this will set you up for the rest of the race. However, having said that, after that, there are many, many hills. You're going to run through the Valley of a Thousand Hills, which takes its name for a reason. Um, and, the, you know, they're very, there's very little flat road on the Comrades route. So after that, you virtually are always going to be running either up or down. And 
what goes down must go up again. So uh, there are a lot of hills, there are a lot of unnamed hills, and you you really going to need to be prepared for that and take that first 40 kilometers very slowly and sensibly in order to set yourself up for the rest of the race. Then if we, so you'll run up and out to get out of Durban, you will start on the freeway and you can see the whole route profile is on the bottom right uh, of the screen. And then I've added my comrades in three days uh, route profile there just above it on the left uh, from our old home where uh, I used to join the route at the top of 45th cutting. At an, so you'll be at a, there you'll be at an altitude of 163 meters. Uh, to get there, you're going to run flat through town, which doesn't last very long, and then you'll turn right at the end of town uh, and go up onto the freeway uh, where the climbing will start. You'll then run up to Tollgate, which is more climbing. You'll then have a short descent uh, on the freeway and then turn off and go up towards 45th Cutting. Uh, so that's all within the first 6.7 kilometers, climbing up to an altitude of 163 meters, which will seem pretty hilly for some of you, but for us Durban, Durban locals, that's, uh, that's pretty normal running. And it's pretty characteristic of how the Comrades route is. You won't have climbed any named hills, uh, but you will have climbed relentlessly. And that is pretty typical of the Comrades route. Um, just one thing to be aware of there in the 45th cutting area, after you, dis, do you uh, so you'll get to the top of 45th cutting and then you're going to do a short little descent. Um, uh, there are some roadworks happening there. They are doing some major work, roadworks on the uh, N2 and N3. Uh, the N, you'll be running over the N2 uh, and they are widening the freeway underneath the M13. And because of that, they've had to demolish the bridge and put all of the traffic over onto one side. So the running lane is going to narrow dramatically down. It might cause a bit of a backlog and you might be forced to walk down a hill um, because of just a backlog, depending on where you are sort of in the running order. Uh, the leaders will certainly get through there clean, but I know I'm expecting to have a bit of a walk because of traffic, much like um, the route out of Marisburg last year where it narrowed and we had to walk. Uh, but you won't have to jump over any pavements or anything like that, like we had to last year on the uprun. Uh, but just be prepared for that and understand that there might be a bit of congestion at that point where you are crossing the N2. From there, you, uh, you are now sort of you going up into Westfall on the M13. Um, there's more climbing and you're going to head up from that area and just climb steadily up through Westfall. In Westfall, there is a bit of a crest of the hill with a short descent and you'll cross over a bridge in the middle of Westfall and then just climb very gently to the base of Kawi's Hill. Um, you know, that which should tell you something about you. By, by the time that you get to the base of Kawi's, you will have run just short of 14 kilometers and you'll be at an altitude of 275 meters. Uh, Kawi's really, uh, sorry, Comrades really is about more than just running five big hills. You haven't run a single hill yet and you will feel like you have just climbed and climbed and climbed. Um, so just be mentally prepared for that. You're going to have to take it easy. Um, it's going to be, you, you know, you're going to be averaging probably, I'd say 35 to 45 seconds a kilometer slower uh, than what your normal pace should be at the moment. Uh, but you're about to, the road is about to kick up and you are about to hit the first of the big five hills. You will now have 72 kilometers to go. Kawi's Hill is uh, a much bigger hill on the uprun than if you've, if you've done a couple of down runs in the last few years. It's a much bigger hill from the Durban side. Uh, plant some walks. The hill itself is a two kilometer climb of 100 meters in altitude. Uh, it is in three stages. The bottom part is the steepest part where you run from the bottom up to Woodhouse Road. 
and it then eases a little bit. You'll see a little bit of a crest as you're approaching. And if you don't know it very well, you might think you're getting near the top. Uh, but it just eases a little bit. And then you're on the middle section, which is a bit less steep. And then the next, what will look like the top to you, if you don't know the road very well, it should be light by then, by the way, for most of us. As you're coming through Westville, for most of us, it should be getting light. Um, but you're not at the top yet. The road's going to bend to the left after the crest and go, uh, go a little bit shallower again. And then there's a long bend to the right. And the the, the top of Cowies is on that long bend. And you'll pa run past a runner's tap where the landmark is. And that's where that sign is. Um, and it looks down towards the old home where I grew up. Grew up actually, I grew up in Pine Town. I uh, went to preschool and primary school in Pine Town. And we lived there uh, all the way through my high school years, although I did go to high school in Durban. Um, and I used to do a lot of training over Cowies Hill. To get to the point that's in the picture there now, it was 5Ks from home. Um, and I used to run there quite regularly and even, you know, run over onto the Durban side and then do a loop and run back. So it is a hill that I know very well. And in fact, that picture is looking down towards where my mom still lives, uh, which is my old home. Um, but yeah, plan some walks. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a good hill to talk about comrade strategy. So if you want to save effort on the, you know, the bigger hills, the steeper hills, it makes more sense to walk where the hills are steeper. In the case of Cowies, the steepest part is the bottom part. So that's where it makes sense, sense to walk. You're going to save effort and you're going to lose, you know, if you compare a walker to a runner on a steep hill, the walker is going to save effort and lose far less time if he's walking on the steep part of the hill. Um, and then, so you're going to be walking more towards the bottom. You know, don't, don't wait until you're tired from running uphill to slow down and have a walk. Walk where you're going to save the most effort. Um, then another thing that you can do is as you're approaching the top of a hill, take a little walk, get your heart rate down. And in this case, the, the gradient is pretty shallow near the top, but just take a short walk, just get your heart rate under control, get it down. And then when you run down the other side of the hill, you're, you'll be running down the other side of the hill with your heart rate down and expending less effort. So that, that's just something to take note of that you can really take advantage of on comrades and it will save you a lot of energy and a lot of effort and it'll put uh, fuel in the tank for when you need it later on. Just be careful when you go down. Uh, it is a 1.2 descent into Pine Town. Um, be very careful of protecting your legs on all of the descents. You, you're still very early in the race. You're going to need, you know, your calves and your quads are going to do a lot of work uh, climbing hills. And with your quads particularly, you need to protect them from impact on any of the downhills that you do get. Um, because you're going to need them to climb. So make sure that you are vigilant and disciplined with your running gait uh, so that you're not overstriding and reaching out in front of you with your strides and letting your calves take all the hit and absorb the impact as you sort of breaking on your way down. Um, it, it, that really is important to save your quads. You are then going to run down... You've, well, you've done the first of the five big hills now, uh, but that one on the day, that one really will seem uh, relatively easy. And you're going to run 1.2 kilometers down into Pine Town and then are going to start the gentle climb through Pine Town. A lot of people will think it's flat, but you are uh, overall through Pine Town as you, you do undulate a little bit. But overall, you're going to gain 40 meters of altitude running through Pine Town. And you are going to be approaching St. John's Bridge in the dip as the M19 goes over your head. Um, at that stage, you will have run 18.5 kilometers and have 67.3 to go. And you will need to get there before two hours and 45 minutes. If you are a borderline 12-hour runner, which is not ideal, you should, be a, you should be running slower than that, actually, if you're going to run on a sensible schedule. But uh, the cutoffs don't allow for that. And you need to make sure that you're getting there in time.
on your way through Pine Town, you really need to get yourself psychologically ready because you are approaching the second of the big five hills and it is the biggest one in the race. That is the monster that is Fields Hill. It is the biggest hill of the race and, and obviously the biggest of the big five. And it's also the steepest gradient in the race. You will hit the bottom at 20 kilometers approximately with uh, 66 and a half to go this year. Uh, shortest ever comrades in history, I believe. Um, it's a four kilometer climb and you will gain 200 meters in altitude. It does shallow off quite a lot towards the top um, and is relatively steep down the bottom. My advice here is to walk, walk and walk and be really sensible. The steepest part of the climb is at the bottom, actually when you're on the on-ramp. So you will run underneath the bridge on the M13 and then we will we will be going up on the upside for traffic. So that's how it'll be closed for us. And yeah, the steepest part is the the down the the part on the on ramp. Um, and then you'll just wind up the hill, take it, take it very slowly and save energy and take it easy. Um, we ran up there on route tester yesterday, actually. Um, I ran up there a few weeks ago on Comrades in Three Days with 356 uh, meters in altitude at the base of Fields Hill. Um, and yeah, you're about to really do a tough climb. Here is a little story for you about 1994. So I'm um, back over in my old hood now on the morning side side of Durban uh, have to admit it feels quite unusual to be running on a weekday and be out in the sunlight because for the last few weeks that really hasn't been possible dark when you get home in the morning but uh, you can get a few extra miles in today and uh, take an extra day of recovery before a route test on the weekend and well when you put it all together uh, this might be close to my peak week uh, but anyway uh, back to the slide talking about Fields Hill so I remember in 1994 Alberto Salazar the American who was a 2 out 8 marathoner and had been a top marathoner in, in those days. Two or eight was sort of close to the world record, I think. And, uh, you know, he'd, he'd come off the world marathon major circuit. Uh, it was before the Africans had really taken over. And uh, he didn't really know. He trained on a treadmill for most of his mileage because it was the weather where he's from in the States wasn't suitable to be outdoors much. So he tried to simulate the hills and undulations of comrades on a treadmill, which is absolutely crazy. And had a lot of speed, obviously, with his background. He ran through Pine Town, sort of holding back with the front runners, and was thinking, why the hell are these guys running so slowly? And at the bottom of Fields Hill, he changed gears, took the lead, and ran up Fields Hill on his own, um, and just took off, got a massive lead, and instead of being sensible with all the local knowledge and holding back, the lead pack tried to chase him, worried that they wouldn't catch him, and all they ended up doing was running themselves into the ground, and so did Salazar, and by the end, Salazar did win the race in his only comrades and uh, but by the end he was going so slowly and he was so out of it that he was pouring all of his sports drinks instead of drinking it and pouring water over his head he was pouring his sports drinks over his head and uh, I know this because we were seconding him and uh, he was just completely out of it wasn't able to talk sense and was running very very slowly but he was so far ahead that morning guys <laughs> yeah you 
he was he was just so far ahead and everybody else was so buggered from having chased him and obviously he had a lot of speed uh, from his marathon background that he never got caught but uh, don't make that mistake you really really want to be holding back uh, it's a massive hill and if you do take a bit of a walk and be conservative the time that you lose you'll gain in the second half of the race so have confidence and be brave and do that so hopefully you've taken field hill relatively conservatively and climbed that 200 meters up to 545 kilometer uh, meters in altitude and you'll be just short of the 24 kilometer marker by the time you crest out in Kloof. Um, you will then continue climbing actually, but it will flatten off and take a detour through Kloof back onto Old Main Road, which is a nice shady part of the route. And um, if you've got seconds trying to move and follow you up, uh, it is there, there is access there. Uh, and I'll try and remember to mention uh, good places where your seconds can access because it does get pretty tricky on the uprun um, to get access to parts of the route, particularly in the second half of the route. But you're going to go through Kloof and then into Winston Park where you will climb another unnamed hill, which is Fire Station Hill. And that will approach the second cutoff which is at the Astron Garage, which used to be an engine garage in Winston Park. Uh, you will have run 29.6 kilometers when you get there. You will need to be there before four hours and 30 minutes, and you will have 56.4 kilometers to go. You will then turn right and run up into Hillcrest, uh, which has its name because it has the is at the crest of a hill as i've shown here by the time you get there you will be at 700 meters in altitude which is higher than peter marisberg the finish is at about 650 odd meters in altitude and in hillcrest you will have run 33 kilometers so you have climbed up past the altitude of the finish within the first 33 kilometers which really is a lot of climbing um, from where you crested Fields Hill to get to uh, Hillcrest, you will have climbed in the 14 kilometers that it takes to get you there, you would have climbed 295 meters. So, you know, it's really not flat at all. And aside from descending off uh, Cowie's Hill and then you're about to do another little descent uh, on Heartbreak Hill, you will have climbed incessantly. Um, you will also have crowds along the side of the road almost the whole way. And you'll descend down Heartbreak Hill with the help of those crowds. And it will take you to the bottom of Bothers Hill. Again, on the descent, just take care of your legs. You still got a lot of climbing to do uh, with number three of the big five in front of you. But uh, one thing is that the crowds are really about to dry up. So now bottom right, I've got my Comrades in Three Days. This is day two of Comrades in Three Days. Um, and you are approaching the bottom of Bothers. You now, for the last time, you will be at the altitude of the finish in Maritzburg at the bottom of Heartbreak. So, so you can see there on my 2017, it's 663 meters. So just slightly above Maritzburg. Um, I got 647 on Comrades in Three Days. Uh, and you are about to climb Bothers Hill, which is a two kilometer climb, 110 meters this time, so slightly more than Cowie's. Um, you might be really starting to feel your quads and your calves by now. Uh, you will have run 36 Ks and have 50 kilometers to go by the time you get to the top. Um, I actually ran Root Tester with a novice who hasn't run Comrades yet. And she actually found uh, both this hill to be tougher than Fields Hill on the day. Uh, she said she was really, you know, she was feeling her calves even when we were walking, uh, taking walk breaks. Um, and yeah, on Comrades Day, when you get here, you know, you will have climbed a long way and run a long way. And the uh, going really is going to start getting pretty tough. 
Uh, but as I said, you have done most of your climbing and you are at the same altitude as the finish. When you crest out at the top there, uh, you'll be at 770 odd meters and you are about to get your first bit of respite uh, for seven kilometers as you are about to descend down into Drummond. Um, as you can see, uh, it's not all descent though. You'll come off the top of it. You'll run. You'll run past Kersney College as you're approaching the top of Bothers. That's where you're going to say goodbye to the crowds, and then you'll start descending down the other side. The road is pretty windy, uh, and then you'll hit a short ascent in the village of Bothers Hill, uh, which will then it's a pretty irritate. You'll cross the railway line and then have a little irritating climb, which is I, I always find it quite steep, and you'll. You'll have the Rob Roy up on the hill on your right. That's the first little ascent. Uh, then once you've gone over that Rob Roy hill, you'll descend again, which will take you down into Alveston. And then there's a little climb up and out of Alveston and over the hill. Um, so that's a second little climb. And then, But then from Alveston, you will descend. Um, and that'll take you down towards Drummond. Be very careful. Your quads and your calves will have done a lot of work to get you up the hills. And be careful of the impact on the downs on your quads, which should be pretty mashed. You really don't want to toast your quads. Um, so you really want to land with your impact point as close to underneath your hips as you can. Do not overstride and break. Uh, get those feet down underneath your hips and let your feet fling out behind you while you're running down the hill. Don't break. Uh, and mash those quads. You will definitely be feeling that they are there, and they will telling you they will be telling you that you have done a lot of hard work. And at this stage, you would have done three of the big hills, and definitely be higher than the finish. On the way down, you 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 do need to be very careful because you still you are approaching uh, in Chonga, which is the uh, you know, it's a real stinger of the uprun. Um, but on the way down, there is a flat piece of road. Uh, I know they are rare, but there is a flat piece of road. And that is where the Comrades Wall is, um, which it'll be on your right this year. as you And it's growing remarkably with those little plaques on it. Um, my mom, I bought my mom a plaque up there actually a few years ago. And hers, we, I, I bought two. Uh, we both, she... She ran in comrades number 28756 and handed it over to me. So our plaques are both together. Um, that'll be about a kilometer before you hit Drummond uh, on a flat piece of road. Uh, there'll likely be a seconding table there because there's a lot of space on the right-hand side. And then just after that, the road will uh, just kick up a very little bit and you'll go uh, off to the left and you'll pass Arthur's seat, which will probably look like that uh, by the time most of us go past. Uh, don't forget to, there should be some people at Comrades Wall handing out some flowers. Um, if, if there's no flowers left, just grab a weed or something from the side of the road and, uh, you know, say a quick thanks to Arthur and doff your cap and put your flower or plant into the little uh, shape, cutout shape in the rock. And it's supposed to give you good luck for the second half of the race. You are one kilometer away from Drummond, which uh, you will have run just short of 44 kilometers. So where you actually will, the, the actual halfway point of Comrades this year will be sort of, you will still be on the descent into Drummond. It, um, it will be after the railway bridge, but um, it's, it's going to be a little bit before you actually hit the bottom of the hill <clears throat> and my advice is not to send seconds to Drummond um, you will have been lonely for quite a long stretch of the route by the time you get there it might be getting quite hot depending on the weather on the day uh, on route tester yesterday it was very warm um, but yeah if, for your seconds to get there they will have to deal with traffic and park a long way away and make sure they can park so that they can get out and don't get parked in and all that kind of stuff. Um, there are areas that you can access that are very close by to Drummond um, 
that you just have to use a map and you can park not very far away from the route. The one access point is just after Arthur's Seat. It's called Impala Ridge Road. Uh, that does have road access immediately onto the Comrades route. And in my experience from uh, the years that I've seconded is when we've gone there, you haven't had to park very far down the road at all. And there really aren't very many people that use it. Uh, and then you can also access sort of the Comrades Wall area uh, you can't, you, there's not direct access, but there are paths that are very well worn that the locals use. And you only have, you can park sort of 40 or 50 meters away from the route and just use those paths to get to those, those access points on the route for seconding purposes um, to make sure you're getting, you know, the nutrition that you need to get. So that would be my uh, advice uh, for nutrition on these sections of the route is to take advantage of those access points, which are just before you get to halfway. Um, yeah, as I said, there'll be a massive crowd again. You'll be able to hear the music from a distance away. Uh, but hopefully you have protected your legs for what is coming, which is in Tonga. So you've run further than a marathon and you've got a long ascent ahead of you. Again, uh, it is a much, much harder hill from the Durban side. Um, and you're going to climb for 2.7 kilometers. Uh, it's going to take you from 650 odd meters. You're going to go up to 790 over 2.7 kilometers. And you won't be able to see the top until you're there. It really does wind. Um, you might be in the shade for quite a bit of it, which is quite nice. Uh, very lonely. And it, it, now it will be starting to get tough. Um, it climbs 135 meters, and by the time you get to the top, you'll basically have a marathon distance to cover. It's 42.8 kilometers to go. Um, but once you get to the top of Inchonga, the hardest work really is done. But the route is quite lonely and flat, and you will have to deal with all the supposedly flat stretches of comrades on what are now definitely tired legs and your head is what is going to get you through and uh, help you to enjoy it and approach it positively and get it done. Along the way on this stretch of the route, you will pass uh, a number of landmarks. So it's supposedly flat, uh, but you will be undulating all the time and you'll be heading onto Harrison Flats um, You'll, you'll actually run past a, an old green and yellow sign. So once you've descended off in Changa, you'll go over another very small hill. And then as you're curving left, you will see the, the green and yellow sign that says Harrison. And from there, you will start a pretty steady climb, which will take you to the top of Harrison Flats. So as you can see from, I've marked the, what I call the top of Harrison Flats um, on the read profile there. So you'll be at, again, a more or less similar altitude to the top of Nchonga uh, at 792 meters by the time you get there. But along the way, you will pass Etembeli School, which is a school for handicapped kids. And they will, it's a lonely stretch of road. They will come out onto the road and be there giving runners high fives and line the sides of the road. So enjoy that. Uh, it really does put a smile on their faces when on Comrades Day and they do benefit. They are a charity that does benefit from the race. Um, so yeah, use the energy that you'll get from those kids. Sometimes they sing and the ones that can stand up will dance and the kids who are in wheelchairs will be there on the side of the road in their wheelchairs. Uh, so yeah, give them a high five and uh, enjoy it. Um, and then once you pass there, you really, yeah, it's just a, a steady climb all the way up to the top of Harrison Flats. Along the way, you'll pass uh, in Changa Caravan Park where you'll see some crowds again. That is a point where your seconds can also access. Uh, might be a little bit of a walk, but generally the, the road there is quite nice and wide. And generally the traffic isn't too bad um, getting in and out. Uh, so it is a decent uh, option uh, if you've got seconds that are trying to move around. Uh, and it will be the, the first time in quite a long time that you uh, will be able to see anybody. Um, so yeah, that's that's an Enchanga Caravan Park, which you access from Hammersdale Turnoff. Um, you will then from the top of Harrison Flats, it really is pretty much flat, uh, and you'll run flat for a little way, 
and you will descend down towards Cater Ridge and then a little climb up um, and you will hit the cutoff. I think it's underneath the bridge as you cross underneath the freeway. Um, the cutoff is at 8 hours and 10 minutes. You'll have 28.9 kilometers to go at that point. Um, by now, the cutoff should be sort of easing with the pressure a little bit. Uh, but one thing to take note of in Cater Ridge is there's a big truck stop there where a lot of guys stop and sleep overnight. And the the quality of the road is generally pretty poor. Although when we ran there yesterday, it wasn't too bad for how Cater Ridge sometimes can be. But you do, you are, you are pretty tired getting there. And it's very easy to trip and fall, like sort of with the little bumps and things in the tar and the odd pothole and whatever. But it, as I said, it's not too bad at the moment. And hopefully uh, the road will have been swept. Um, from there, you are going to undulate towards Camperdown. And on the way, uh, you'll go through Camperdown. And then on the way out of Camperdown, you're going to come across the hill that I call Norman, because the hill has no name, um, which is marked in the red there. Um, and that's it's just a, like an irritating like 400 meter climb, and you'll be you'll be coming out of uh, Camperdown thinking this road's going to be flat if you don't know it, and then you'll just have this wall of a hill in front of you. Uh, but just uh, you know, for most of us, you're going to be taking a walk up there, and just you know, do your best to get up. Uh, it's not very long. You're not going to lose very much time. It's quite steep, so a good opportunity to to walk and recover your heart rate. Um, one thing about Cater Ridge and Camperdown, I would avoid sending seconds there who need to move. It's very congested. Basically, what happens on this part of the down run is it's lonely, and then lonely for five kilometers, and then you have a big clump of a lot of people on the side of the road. And then lonely for five kilometers, big clump again, and that's that. Literally, is um, you've got Inchanga Caravan Park, Cater Ridge, Camperdown, and then you've got Omnas Road. Um, so I would avoid sending seconds uh, to Cater Ridge and Camperdown because of those access and lack of parking problems. Um, Omlas Road might be a little tricky this year. They're doing roadworks there. It is the highest point in the race. Um, in the past, I have tried to get seconds there and they have managed to get there. But this year with the route deviation that's going to happen there, it might be a little tricky. But you can access Omlas Road via the Camperdown turnoff and then drive to Amnos Road on that road. It generally is a bit less well attended by spectators. Um, and they might have to walk a little bit, but again, the road is wide. It's a bit like in Chong Caravan Park, where the road is wider uh, and doesn't tend to get blocked. So they can get in and out. Um, but, and when they get out, they're going to need to drive back to Camperdown in order to access the freeway. Um, but from there, just one thing with your seconds, they are going to need to hurry up in order to beat you to Maritzburg because the traffic along the freeway from sort of Camperdown area will be moving very slowly at points. And I remember seconding my wife in 2019. I, I honestly thought that I, I'd seconded her and uh, a friend of her she was running with at Omnos Road. And I genuinely thought that they were going to beat me to the finish at one stage, although the traffic flow did ease and I did beat them there. Um, but if your seconds are moving, that really is the last uh, point where your seconds can meet you, uh, and but they need to know that it's uh, that they need to get to the finish if they're going to see you finish from there. Um, yeah, and that's once you've climbed up to Omlas Road, you are at eight hundred and eighteen meters in altitude. You you've almost run sixty nine kilometers, and the finish in Maritzburg is at six hundred and fifty odd meters. So. From here, you really are going to have a, a lot of downhill running. Um, and you will have run quite a bit of flat, overall flat getting there. But from now, if you've run sensibly in the first 40 kilometers, now you really are going to be able to earn the payback. And if you can still run and you've still got a bit of bounce in your legs, the gravity is really going to be there to help you. Uh, and you're going to be able to take advantage of it if you are still able to do that. Uh, and even if your legs are pretty tired, just be aware that, you know, you're going to be able to take advantage. You are going to be able to move a little bit faster. Um, 
you know, you might have been walking a lot up until now, uh, but now your your sort of your run to walk ratio really should be a lot more towards the running side. So just try and save a bit in the tank there and uh, be ready and have some energy left and some bounce in your legs. Uh, there is a cutoff on Omnath Road, which will be at 9 hours and 40. Uh, you will have run 68.7 kilometers by the time you get to the cutoff. Uh, and as I said, I find it a really handy place to try and get some fuel in. You've still got a decent amount of running time. So you can get some fuel in and your body can process it and uh, you can use it uh, to get you to the finish. Um, and cash in, hopefully, on having run that uh, first 40 kilometers conservatively and uh, the only little hiccup in that plan though is those two they actually the hills really the poly shorts they're not that big of hills but because they come in the stage of the race when they do they really are quite a tough uh proposition uh this is just a picture of the route deviation at omnos road so because of the roadworks the old route that we always have run in the past is shown in the green um, but because of the roadworks, we're actually going to turn right uh, there just in the proximity of Funamervis Garage. And we are going to run up onto the flyover over the freeway and then going to run over the freeway early and down onto the actual new freeway that is being constructed. It's not yet being used by traffic, but we are going to run for a short distance on the newly tarred freeway. And then we're going to head up on the opposite side of the freeway to what we normally run for a short distance uh passing the highest point there and then meet up with the old route a, a couple of kilometers uh, further down the road so just be aware of that route deviation and that climb up the bridge there it is a it is a climb uh onto the bridge gonna miss this in uh in morningside we have kind people who have runners taps like this outside their front gardens and uh, over in the Glenwood side of town, town we're a bit short on uh, drinking taps so this one is quite a lot further away now uh, not going to see it as often and really going to miss it last road you are on the battlegrounds of the comrades if you have been smart and conservative uh, you will be able to cash in and run down some of these hills but you do still need to save a little bit of effort and keep a little bit of spring in your legs uh you'll run down a lot you'll go underneath the linfield park um freeway access point um which is a bridge um i haven't run underneath there recently so i don't know if it's still narrow like it was last year um but you'll run under that bridge there'll be some crowd there although people are not supposed to be able to stop there there will be some people who manage to <laughs> dodge the cops and get some support there um, and you will be running into a suburb uh, as you run towards Asperton so there will start to become people dotted along the side of the road uh, and you'll run down a hill known as Tumble Inn which will take you to the bottom of Polly Shorts at the bottom of Tumble Inn you'll cross a river uh, which in the old days there wasn't a bridge there and the runners used to have to actually jump across rocks to get across the stream uh, so can you imagine having to do that on comrades after having run sort of 75 kilometers? Um, but after you run across that stream, there'll be a little flat stretch of road and then you will have a straight one kilometer hill in front of you. Uh, in front of you. It, it is relatively steep. Uh, it is only one kilometer. Um, and that is Little Polly Shorts. That will take you up into the heart of Ashburton which is at 77 Ks, uh, just short of 700 meters in altitude. So same altitude as uh, in Changa. Um, from there, but you still, you, you are on the battleground of comrades now. If you've been conservative and you've got legs left, uh, you really will be paying the benefit, but it, it, it is going to start being a real struggle. Uh, well, it will have been for quite a long distance now, but it, the, the apples are really going to sap your energy and you need to be careful and save your effort on the down getting down into the bottom of long polys i've marked the bottom and the top of, of uh, polys here uh, so by the time you get to the bottom of long polys uh the hill between the two poly shorts is pretty straight and then at the end it bends to the right uh, you will it will be lonely again you'll be on your own apart from the seconding tables 
And then at the bottom, you cross another little stream and the road bends to the left. And then it's going to kick up and that will be long polys. Long polys is, a, is quite a windy part of the route and there is a fair amount of camber. A lot of trucks do use the road. So you have to be careful where you're running on the road so that you, you can take the best advantage of the flat camber. I tend to run up the middle for most of it, but just look for level camber. camber. Your legs are going to be absolutely done by now. And it really does take extra effort to run on steep camber. So find the flattest part of the road. Be aware of little sort of dips and dongas in the tar from the trucks. Um, mind the cat's eyes because it's very, very easy to trip and fall. You'll be quite lonely. It'll be quite hot. Uh, and you will have two kilometers of climbing and you won't be able to see the top until you're almost there. It is 120 meters of climbing. Um, yeah, you will mentally, like you're almost there, you'll be done, you'll be tired of running by now and you will be pretty lonely. Well, I do say that uh, it's lonely for most. I do have family that live in Peter Marisburg and this was my second comrades actually in 2011. And uh, that's my aunt, the, the adults, extreme left and extreme right are my aunt and uncle, um, who they're the ones who live in Marisburg. Uh, and that's my cousin, who's the young girl with the blonde hair. She's now a fully grown adult, uh, finished school and well, for quite a few years, actually, she's finished school. And then my wife is next to me. Uh, we were yet to get married. Our wedding was in two weeks time at that point of view. And they had walked uh from the Marisburg side of Polly's, they had walked over the hill and down the other side and uh, walked with me up the last few hundred meters of Polly Shorts. And that is my one of my favorite comrades' photos that I have. Uh, as you can see, I had a tough day. If you look at my left leg, um, I'd actually tweaked a calf. Uh, I was a bit silly and had uh, run a track session a bit too hard in the taper and tweaked a calf. Um, and as a result of the way I was running, I was subconsciously unloading my calf and uh, my quads, because I couldn't use my calves to climb the hill, I was absolutely frying my quadriceps and really struggled through the day uh, with very, very tired quads. And that's why the strapping is there. It was a really tough day, but I did get to the finish. And yeah, what you need to do is uh, just get to the finish by any means on foot. Um, you know, crawl, walk, jog where you can. If you've got a bit of spring left in your legs, uh, it'll feel amazing. And uh, you can now you'll be getting crowds and support on the side of the road after you approach the top of Polly's. Uh, and I imagine that if you've got any uh, spring left in your legs, that it will feel amazing. I, I have never uh, had that feeling on the up run. I have managed to do it on the down run. Uh, but all the up runs that I've done, uh, I've been pretty done by the time I get here. Uh, in 2017, when I ran Comrades, I was feeling pretty good and going pretty well and, and went up little polys feeling pretty good, but then sort of ran out of spring and gas uh, somewhere on the descent to the bottom of long polys. And then by the time I hit the bottom of long polys, it felt like there was a sack of potatoes on my back and that I was having to climb the hill with a, you know, carrying a fridge or something and really struggled into Maritzburg. So, you know, that can happen. Um, but when you do get to the top of Long Polly's, it really is almost all descent into Maritzburg. Um, and, you know, you will be, you, you know, you can, the finish is like a magnet and it sucks you in. So even if you are feeling a bit done, it really is much better from here on. Um then the route into Maritzburg is uh, different this year, and you will descend almost all the way there. Um, but let's have a look at that. So you're going to come in on the on the on the the old road, um, and where we used to turn right early, you're going to run past that. Um, and you're going to keep going and you're going to turn right into Arby Road, which is sort of the old comrade route from years ago. Uh, but the old comrade route used to turn left up Jasmine Road. You're going to bypass that and you're going to keep going. And that then becomes, um, what's the name of the road here? It becomes King Edward Road. Takes you past the the P Peter Marisburg campus of the of UKZN. 
You'll then turn left onto Allen Payton Road, which most people probably still know as Durban Road. Uh, run a short distance along Allen Payton, and then you'll turn right onto Connaught Road, which takes you past Comrades House. And in fact, it's about to be renamed Comrades Road. Um, then as you're approaching the end of Connaught Road, you will be able to see the boundary of uh, Scottsville Racecourse. You'll then do a left, run around the traffic circle on New England Road, and then you'll access uh, Scottsville Racecourse straight off New England Road. No need to run in and around the back like we used to. Uh, and with the old route, we went in towards St. Charles College and came in through the back. But straight in, across the race course, I hope they will lay something across the race course so we don't have to deal with the long grass. Um, and then we're going to finish in the opposite direction from what you have done previously. I really hope this gives the runners a better feel of being at the finish. The way we used to come in in the past, you sort of, you didn't feel like you were really at the finish yet. You ran under the underpass. There weren't really any crowds around you. And then you did a left turn and it was sort of a very short distance uh, with your loved ones standing quite far away, actually, because, there, you know, as runners, you, you're you pretty tired and you take the shortest route. And it was difficult for loved ones to actually get close access. Uh, so I really hope that with this long straight run and at the finish that loved ones can stand close to the fence and sc scream and shout. Uh, when they see you coming and it's actually making me emotional to think of that prospect, uh, you know, and you can give them a high five when you run past uh, and just really have that feeling of, uh, of a lift that when you get onto the grass, you know, whether you are done for the day and have been walking for long distances that you, you know, you just feel like uh, gravity has uh, got less and you suddenly get spring in your legs uh, to cross that finish line. So I really hope that the new finish gives us that feeling and I'm hopeful that the, the new finish layout is going to do that for us. Then just uh, in closing, just to speak about this. So you can see here, I've got uh, the finish marked at 635 on my uh, 2017 data. And here it's got Winston Park uh, as you're coming out of, you're coming out of Winston Park and entering into Hillcrest marked at 635. It, you know, it does vary a little bit with the readings that you get on GPS. I have corrected or allowed corrections on these values. But in my experience, the last point where you pass the same altitude as the finish is uh, at the base of Heartbreak Hill and as you are just starting the climb of both is. So, you know, that first, uh, to get to the top of both is, right, the first 40 kilometers is really the hardest part of the route. Then from there, you've got that seven kilometer descent down into Drummond and then you've got to get up in Changa. Once you're there, the hard work really is done. And if you run those four... 40 kilometers conservatively and just save your effort and save your legs, you'll have some gas in the tank to run the rest of the race. If you don't do that, it's going to be a really, really long day. That day that I mentioned where I had the quad issues uh, as a result of having tweaked my calf uh, in the sort of very short time period before the race, I, I remember running through Kloof and feeling that my quads were already fried and telling my, my well, at that stage, she was my fiance because it was two weeks before our wedding that I knew that this was going to be a really long and tough day. Um, you know, I just take that first 40 kilometers really conservatively and you'll take advantage of it in the second half of the, of the route. Uh, it really does set you up. But having said that, even if you have a good run, there really is no uh, such thing as an easy comrade. Uh, you know, running, I think it's, just short of 86 kilometers this year running that kind of distance is not easy for anybody um, but it is a huge achievement and it is something that anybody who gets to the finish line will have a smile on their face by the time they get there i know uh, like this uh, on uh, saturday when we run um route tester we finished in camperdown having started in westville and you know those last two kilometers uh, for me were really tough and I'd had, in, I'd had enough. I knew I'd achieved my training goals and, you know, it, get, it got tougher and tougher just to do those last few kilometers. And my wife actually picked up a couple of people who also, they just had enough. Um, but when you're getting towards the finish of Comrades, as the crowds lie on the road through Marisburg, you, you'll feel the complete opposite of that. You know, you'll feel like you've got helium inside you lifting off the road and suddenly you'll feel a lot lighter and able to run. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, it really is quite an effort to get there. There's no such thing as an easy comrade. It is a huge uh, achievement just to get to the start line and to get a medal at the end, no matter what the color, everybody can be proud of their achievement. So hopefully that'll help some of you out who aren't that familiar with running the other way from what we've done in the last few years. And uh, you know, as I said in the slideshow, the uprun really, the first 40 kilometers is by far the toughest part of the race. Uh, and by the time you get to the top of both is, you've done almost all your climbing and you've just really got to get over in Changa. Then once you've done that, you basically undulate. And if you can save a bit in the tank, then you'll have a good run. You must, must, must be confident enough to lose time in those first 40 k's. Uh, as I said, you're gonna lose, to be running sensibly, you're gonna be almost a minute a kilometer slower than sort of your goal pace. You know, so I don't know, with the new distance being shorter, I don't know exactly what the uh, required minute per kilometer uh, speeds are, but for example, on a 90 kilometer route, you know, a bull run, you're gonna to need to run six minutes a K for a, not that I'm in shape to do that this year, by the way, started training a bit late. But, uh, it, you know, if you try and average that, in the first 40 kilometers, you're gonna be approaching seven minutes a kilometer, and you'll then make all the time you need to make up, you'll make it all up in the second half of the race over the more undulating parts of the route and in that last 20 k's once you've gone past Amnos Road you'll really really pay and benefit of the fruits of being sensible and keeping your effort level low enough to survive the whole day so good luck I uh, had planned this year on being out there with all of you uh, it was supposed to be my last turn to run this year um, but uh, she's she pulled out but she did give me enough time to do a couple of, do a few weeks training and get a qualifier in and uh, then start on the route to try and get another medal so I'll be out there with you all the best